Hey everyone, and welcome to our very first Resi Equip. In everything that we do here at Resi, we wanna help empower you to create the best online events. And while we're honored to be able to provide reliable streaming technology to help you get your message to your audience with no interruptions, we know that we certainly don't have all the answers. And that's why in these Resi Equips, we're bringing in guests that we wanna hear from personally, experts in the field who can share their knowledge, their wisdom and experience that we wanna learn from and we wanna share with others. Our vision for Resi Equip is to help equip you with the knowledge that you need to effectively reach, engage, and grow your audience. For today's session, we're thrilled to be bringing in somebody from our own community, Katrina Clark from Red Rocks Church. Red Rocks has been a part of the Resi family for a while now, and we're constantly amazed and inspired by their production, both in the room and online. They have a truly unique cinematic style that's been inspirational in the way that a lot of churches live stream. So today, Katrina will share her top 10 tips for video directing and how she's able to equip her volunteer teams to produce excellent online experiences week after week. In addition to this video, make sure to check out the link in the description with several other resources from today's Resi Equip, including a live Q&A that Katrina does with several other churches, including providing feedback on their live streams, a PDF overview of the talk today, and you can even get the cinema live stream overlay bars that Red Rocks uses. And then you can even access our special show after the show where Katrina and us will sit down and walk through one of her own multi-view recordings and talk through it with her. So let's get right into it. Welcome to Resi Equip. Hey everyone, welcome to Resi Equip. I'm here with the wonderful Katrina Clark and uh, we're gonna get right into her presentation. But just as a quick reminder, uh, just mention that phone number. Uh, we're gonna do a Q&A uh, right after this. And so make sure that you're sending in those uh, questions throughout the day. And so you can text those questions to 303-351-1313. And with that, we'll hand it over to Katrina. Awesome. Thanks, Nate. Thank Thanks you. for having me. This is awesome. It's super fun. Um, so I'll just get right into my top 10 video directing tips. Um, number one, we got worship first. That is the most important. Um, you are a visual worship leader. Um, it's an important role with tons of purpose. Uh, don't get so caught up in the technical that you miss the movement. Um, I'd say this is the, man, biggest thing you can do is just worship because like we're all, oh, sorry. <laughs> we're all, um, yeah, we've been given these gifts and these talents to um, build a kingdom and yeah, just, don't forget to worship. <laughs> Number two, foster a balanced environment. Um, know when to joke around and when to get serious. Both are important in a production environment to build a strong team of trust. And more trust means a better line cut, more creativity, happier volunteers who actually look forward to Sunday um, instead of dreading it. Um, number three, make friends with the LD. This is a key piece also because Lighting, I would say, is the most important part of your line cut. Um, more important than camera or gear or, uh, man, a switcher. If your lighting looks bad, it's, it's an uphill battle to, to get it to look any better before lighting. Um, so, yeah, I would say just learn how your LD lights a song, what elements they um, like to use, why they use certain things, why they don't. Um, yeah, just um, how to best set up your cameras in relation to um, revolving it around the lighting. Um, number four, know the songs. Simple enough. If you don't know what's happening or what's coming up next, then you can't be prepared to capture it well. Um, you don't need to be a musician. You don't have to have tons of background or experience um, in music, but I would say that, um, yeah, you you should know the basics of the song, of how it goes and the structure of verse, chorus, what comes next. Um, number five that goes along with it, know your worship leaders and your pastors because you can know the song and you can know the general order of the service, but I don't know a worship leader or a pastor who hasn't changed something here and there. <laughs> so I would say um, pay close attention and learn mannerisms of the people that are on stage so that you know um, kind of where, where they're going, um, just read their cues. Um, it's possible the worship leader goes into a, another bridge that they 
weren't supposed to Never or happens. ever, right? Or the worship leader, or the um, pastor comes back up and prays in between the songs. And yeah, that happens quite a bit for, for me. And um, I would say that ties into number six, which is focus on transitions. Um, this is probably the most important thing that you can do um, technically as a video director. Um, we all know the feeling. Oof, man, I still get PTSD thinking about <laughs> all of the swivel heads of people looking around back at the tech booth because that transition didn't happen how you thought it was. And um, that's why you're 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 in the in the back video booth exactly. now, right? Yep, Instead that's of why. House, that's why I hide be behind. Hidden back in yep, the. I hide in the other room. The that's why I don't do this. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because man. I've had graphics come up when they weren't supposed to. I've had videos stop in the middle and because um, we didn't test things. And it's just those transitions can really make or break your entire line cut. Um, always be thinking about where you're headed next and where you came from. Um, the, the more comfortable you are and confident you are in what it takes to do every single transition of your service, um, whether or not it's written down in your set list, um, the more comfortable you'll be pivoting if mm. and when, not if, when yeah. <laughs> um, worship leaders and pastors try to alter the course of the service. Um, yeah, it's really important to be flexible when all of this is happening and transitions and knowing where you're going will be your biggest help in, in that. Um, Number seven, cut pace. This is a little bit trickier to define um, because it is, I think, a more subjective piece to video directing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to say um, only go as fast as you can control because um, either direction, if you're too fast and too slow, it can be difficult on either end of that. Um, <clears throat> I'd say that too fast, it feels like man, a runaway car on a, on wet pavement, you know, and, and you're like trying to catch up to yourself. And it's mm -hmm. this never ending cycle of just, oh yeah, I've been there. That's hard. Um, <laughs> but I will say also, if you cut too slow, it can be really disengaging and really, um, like you lose the congregation a little bit. And I have sat through some of, I look back through my own line cuts and I'm just like waiting for the next cut. Um, waiting for it to get there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it can, be, it can be tricky to define and it definitely takes some trial and error and practice. And um, <clears throat> I'd say that finding a good cut pace is easier to do when you know the songs better. Yeah. Um, so listening to the songs before you get into it, knowing like, okay, this is where, like, it starts off really slow and it, it has a lower feel so I can cut around less because it doesn't, the song isn't requiring me to move around a lot or to see a lot of extra stuff. Um, and then as they build into the chorus or the bridge or whatever, um, you can start cutting faster to accommodate for that. Um, but don't just, like, cut fast because you think that that is what looks good mm -hmm. um, for video because it really is um, an intentional thing. I think out of all the points today, that's like the, the yeah. big, kind of the big one, mm -hmm. right? Where it like, it would really take somebody from a level of somebody who's just exactly. like cutting for, right. you know, to display what's in the room versus exactly. cutting for an experience. Right? Yeah, intentionality is the number one name of the game um, point for all of that can kind of sum up all of these points. But um, especially when it comes to cut pace, yeah, being really intentional is will make or break your line cut. Um, and it's... The trickiest too because you know it when you see it you know it when it looks good or yeah. when it doesn't but it's hard to know like in your own line cut in the moment like how that's going to come across um so that's what practice is helpful for that's what you know if you have the capacity to or the um ability to like watching game game footage mm -hmm. um before the service can help you kind of like you think that you're cutting slow enough or fast enough but then when you watch it back it's easier to tell um so that was a big one. Number eight, shot composition. Don't just think about the shot that you're currently on, which is important, but also think about where you've come from and where you're going. Um, so by that I mean avoid like similar shots back to back or cutting from 
like a wide shot to a tight shot, back to the same wide shot, back to, you know, like back and forth. Um, you kind of want to add some more variety um, in terms of <clears throat> wide to tight or tight to wide or whatever. That can be one of the most jarring things mm -hmm. I think that I've seen is like when it's like a shot that's a little bit too close. Right. Um, do you do you ever take times where, where you, you just have to reposition your camera ops oh, and yeah. say, hey, we can't have that same right. shot, yeah, yeah. That, that's not going to work? Yeah, or we, you know, you have camera ops that are seeing the same thing that's interesting, and mm -hmm. so you have like four shots that are the exact same position, and yeah. um, I've seen a lot of, and I've been guilty of cutting from tight shot on a worship leader to a tight shot on a different worship leader, mm -hmm. but it's like similar enough that, you know, it's just like, awkward and like looks like they're kissing and it's just <laughs> you don't want that so um yeah just be really again intentional about looking where you're where you've come from where you're going um kind of the process of where you're trying to get to to tell the story of the movement mm -hmm. um with that i will also say <clears throat> to go along with shot composition um make sure that you're QCing quality control of every shot that you take before you take it um, or if you don't have the capacity to do that as a director, it's important to have somebody else that you trust that can, can do that and maybe is on comms or um, able to coach the cameras a little bit in the moment so that you aren't getting a bunch of repetitive shots um, so that every shot is in focus, every shot is um, framed correctly um, during talking head, making sure that the headroom is consistent and the tracking speed is consistent and there's a lot of elements um, that go into every single shot. And so, yeah, keeping the quality control is important for that. Um, number nine, be a good steward. Use your gear to 110, 110%. Um, find creative ways to stretch what you already have. Be that moving cameras around if you can, working with your LDs to move lights around if you can, or try different scenes. Try a new aspect ratio um, or frame rate if your system allows. I know that at Red Rocks we have a um, like a text letterbox overlay um, that we use. That it's just literally a, a key that yeah. we put on top of our feed during worship that changes the aspect ratio. Um, so we record everything. We shoot it in 16:9, but then yeah. we put a you know 235-1 letterbox just on top of it that we put our lyrics in um, and that works really well for us but it also it serves two purposes one and we can put the lyrics in it so it's not distracting and you're not you know seeing lyrics on top of a bunch of different textures and stuff but also um, <clears throat> it allows us to achieve more of a cinematic look and feel and um, it's just ma it makes a good segmentation between worship and the message yeah that was like that was one of the first things I noticed when I visited yeah. Red Rocks for the first time was like, oh, there's these cinema bars, right. which really it does exactly what you're saying. It provides not just a stylistic feel, but there's there's a lot of function too mm -hmm. with the lyrics being there. Right. Um, and actually, too, if you're watching the the live stream, we'll email it out. Otherwise, if you check the link in the YouTube description afterward, um, we'll give that away in a package. So you'll actually get those those overlays, which is really cool. Yeah. But was that, you know, like, I'm just curious on that one. Like, how, how was that? Was that more of a, a form or function thing for you guys to begin with? Was it something mm -hmm. that was like, hey, this will work really well for the lyrics? Sure. Or was it more to just give that look that you were looking for? It's a good question. I think that it was, it started off as a, how do we, um, like, how do we get to a better place in terms of the function of it? Um, <clears throat> I know we went through a couple different positions for our lyrics over the years. We've done, you know, lower third. We've done top right. We've done, yeah. Um, yeah, we've tried a bunch of different things and have found like it either gets in the way of the video directing because then you're putting lyrics over different places that aren't the best, and um, or you're having to like totally change your entire like the way that you shoot things to accommodate for lyrics, which is like letting the cart or the tail wag the dog or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> like we want to be um, functionally putting lyrics somewhere that makes sense for people to see, but also not interrupting the quality of our stream. Yeah. Um, so it's, I think it started off as a function thing, but it definitely... Um, you guys have adopted it, right. it really as part of the we style. Needed, we, yeah, functionally we needed to change something and then um, found us stylistically that we 
we jived with that better for yeah. sure. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, to wrap that one up, fresh line cuts don't always require new equ equipment um, or expensive cameras. Um, gosh, you can do a lot with a PTZ and a, you know video camera mm -hmm. and, and you can play around with a lot of things and update a lot of things before you need to like get into different gear. You're like you don't have to have all the expensive up to date top of the line things to achieve a, a cinematic look or a good experience um, for your So own much history. of that is the lighting too. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Which it, we'll talk about later. Yeah. Maybe. We can we can go a lot into um, <laughs> I'm not an L D so I don't I can't go on for hours about lighting, but I can definitely attribute to the fact that lighting is one of the most important elements, if not the most important mm -hmm. element of your stream. We always encourage, sorry, I don't want to take over, oh, no, but no. We, uh, just on lighting too, that's one thing that we, we always tell people that come to Resi and are looking to improve their live stream, like, hey, what do I need? Do I need better cameras? I need to go mm -hmm. spend tons of money on, on cameras. And we're like, you know what? Just just move your light a little bit yeah. this way and like put a little bit of light on the background right. and like put, a, you know, just some minor adjustments that you can actually take a pretty cheap camera and right. make it look pretty good. So that's yeah. something that we, we say a lot. And there's so much science that goes to like, um, yeah, like there's so much science behind how you light things mm -hmm. that, man, there are literally like college degrees that you yeah. can get yeah. on just lighting yeah. um, because there's like different terms and phrases and yeah, you could spend a lot of time with that. And if you do, like you, you get a really good result and it's honestly not, it's like a cheaper way to, yeah. really to easy address way. Yeah, your whole line cut. Mm -hmm. So. Um, great. My last point is excellence and encouragement. <clears throat> Work hard to bring your best offering to the Lord. Um, our goal is excellence, not perfection. Doing a good job matters, and your volunteers want to do a good job, genuinely. They want to improve. They want to be creative. Um, they want direction. They want your help. Um, so don't be afraid to offer correction and advice, but make sure it's in a positive manner. Um, most of your volunteers probably aren't full-time cinematographers. They're just average, you know, people that want to serve in a church and um, probably don't have a lot of background and experience. And so the more that you can steward that relationship and steward um, kind of their direction, the better off everything will be because that's the difference between a bitter volunteer or a volunteer mm -hmm. that's like excited to be there and wants mm -hmm. to give up their time every week. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't steer away from offering encouragement and advice um, because people want to get better at what they're doing. Um, but also don't be too harsh. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a fine line because it goes back to the, I guess, man, what, second point of fostering a balanced environment is you, wanna, um, you want both to go hand in hand. Yeah. You want to put your best foot forward and offer your best offering to the Lord and your excellence, um, but if we're not going first in giving grace, then that's not, that's not a good recipe for yeah. church anything. So um, yeah, that's kind of, that's all I have on those, the tip side of it. Um, I, this is fun and I just love being here. Thanks yeah. for listening and I hope these tips help you out. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Katrina. Um, just a couple of things before we get into like the official Q&A in just sure. a few minutes here. But um, I'm, I'm kind of curious. You mentioned a few things that kind of tie in together, and a lot of them are kind of getting in the right headspace mm -hmm. for being in a live video, well, any type of live production environment. Yeah. Um, but I think church and worship especially, you know, important and having yourself prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just having the right relationships with the people that matter on your team, like the right. LD um, and the musicians. Right, and um, the volunteers. I can't tell you how many times, even as a camera op for Red Rocks, yeah. unfortunately, because yeah. I volunteered there, uh, how many times I've gotten up in a, in a, in a uh, guitar, you know, a guitar person's right. face, and they're like, hey, back off. Yeah. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> so, get in the shot, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> so, like, how, how, how do you, personally, as a video director, like, you know, how do you get into the right, um, set yourself into the right environment where you're able to do that well? Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's tricky. I, um, there's definitely a balance between, like you wanna be getting all the right shots and like moving around and being creative, but you also don't wanna be distracting. So 
you have to remember first and foremost what the purpose of g capturing live video is. Mm -hmm. um, it's to not be distracting, but it's just to let people into the experience, whether that's in the room, um, if that's your main audience, or online, if it's, it's more an online capture. Um, so that's the, that's the main question you have to ask yourself first. And um, we find at Red Rocks that the, our main audience is watching online. It's like a, it's not even close. Like there's more people watching online. And so while we are very much considering what's going on in the room, um, our main focus is, hey, this is really important to capture for the people that aren't here because there's a lot of them. And so, um, <clears throat> We've had a lot of conversations with, like you said, the, the musicians, the band, the worship leaders, um, and just make sure that everybody's on the same page because they also need to be asking those questions to themselves too of like, are we doing this more for the people in the room? Yeah. Not that they aren't important, or, or are we considering the larger picture? Um, and just letting everybody else be a part of those conversations and everybody else being on the same page goes a long way in terms of um, not having any conflict or overlap of, yeah, musicians saying, get out of my face, you know. Um, and, you know, balancing that with being respectful, even if you do have those conversations of knowing, like, yeah, you don't, you, there is a, a line where you don't want to be in their face, even if you need to get the shot or whatever. Totally, so, totally. It's yeah. tricky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, real quick, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about your guys' setup. Um, I think uh, <laughs> at one point we either put out a video about Red Rocks or we will put out a video about Red Rocks that we go through mm -hmm. kind of all the different stuff. But I'd love to hear a little bit about your guys' setup because yeah. it is pretty cool, some yeah. of the elements that you guys have put into place. Can you just kind of give me a rundown of, of your sure. camera positions and what you guys use those for? Yeah. So we, um, <clears throat> for our broadcast uh, capture, we have six cameras. Um, camera one is like our main kind of front camera. Uh, it's on tripod. Um, we use Canon C200s uh, currently, and so that's like the main talking head, tracking camera, worship leader, tight shot camera. Um, so for the message, yeah, we just try to keep it as smooth tracking as possible, keep them centered. And then for worship, we have them do a little bit of like handheld feel movement. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh my goodness, the, the one that has surprised me the most, sorry, speaking about handheld, yeah. is like how you guys have done your worship mm -hmm. recordings, no tripods, right? Everybody was on easy rigs. Yeah. That's, that's insane. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's kind of dependent on camera to camera. Sometimes they prefer one over the other. But um, yeah, so that's camera one. Camera two, we, um, it's handheld for worship and then on a tripod for the message. So we do kind of like, yeah, require a lot of that camera app um, in terms of being able to set things up quickly. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> that one moves around a little bit more during worship, more handheld, like you said, not, mm -hmm. not on anything, just trusting the camera apps and um, putting somebody good there that can handle it. And um, we do use a lot of IS as much as we can sure. for those handheld shots. <laughs> Um, camera three is our dactyl camera. It's really cool. It's, um, yeah, like our cable camera just running from the front to the back. And we have, like, the same person pretty much run that every week. Um, Wade, he's our intern, and he's just like, why would you have anyone else run that camera? He's just like, kills it. The dactyl time. is really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of really cool capabilities and he runs it by himself, like which is if you. Oh, he's he's yeah. he's piloting it he's doing and every, moving the camera. All the movement by wow. himself. Which if you yeah if you know dactyl cams or cable cameras, that is no easy feat. Yeah. Um, it's very. Um, <clears throat> I think he does like I don't even know what movement he does with. He has like two joysticks on his hand and then like a foot pedal. Yeah. Speed or something. Yeah. And it's just like video game just. <laughs> status. It's pretty funny. It's fantastic. Watch. Anyway, uh, that's the camera three. Camera four is our drum cam, which is also handheld. Um, <clears throat> it is main, yeah, mainly on the drums, but it does kind of move around, gets um, like the bass camera sure. a little bit, kind of sometimes a reverse shot on the worship leader if it works, um, but mainly focused on that side of the stage. And then camera five is the other stage camera. 
kind of the reverse angle of camera four. Um, and that camera is moving a lot. It's going up and down the stage. Um, it's getting the keys player, guitarists, reverse on worship leaders. Um, and then it, it like, so he's like on stage and then <laughs> we'll run down the stairs and like be looking up at the worship leaders and that camera's doing a lot. That camera also does our like welcome dismissal type shots sure. on stage, just kind of like a more handheld, intimate stage tight shot um, of the person who's welcoming and dismissing. Um, and then camera six is our dolly slider mm -hmm. shot. It's not actually a dolly, but um, we have a really nice big slider um, that spans kind of the back of our auditorium. Um, and again, we kind of have one consistent person who does that, um, Mark Ray, who's just, he just, I don't even know how you make it look that good. <laughs> he just, he does a really great job. So, um, and that's kind of our like wide slider shot and he'll like zoom in tight and, you know, go around hands and um, yeah. So that's our main setup and it works really well for us. It's a, offers a lot of diversity, um, but also isn't too um, tricky to keep up with. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, that'll end our official segment. Um, we are going to do our Q&A and uh, some video review, and then we're even going to go over Katrina's multi-view, which is going to be awesome. <laughs> so uh, if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, make sure to check out the link in the description for that. If you're watching it live, we're going to go ahead and continue. Stick around. Uh, thank you, everyone. Well, thanks so much for being a part of our very first Resi Equip. Make sure you check out that link in the description with lots more from today's session, including a PDF overview of the talk, the live stream cinema bar overlays that Red Rocks uses, and lots more. And also, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to us, and you'll be able to see a lot of great content like this, including lots of great interviews, stories, production tours, and more, all relating to live production. So thanks so much to Katrina again for being a part of today's session. Thanks to you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.